We should be going live on the twatch.tv. I have more subscribers this week than I did last week. I have no idea what's happening. Please don't say twatch. I, 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 I already did. I can't unsay it now. And you just it said it again. On the, it's now on the record forever. Yeah. And now you said it the second time, which means now it's normalized. Thanks, Trouble. Who doesn't like to watch TV? Come on now. See? It's just coming up again and again. The best thing about Twitch is there's no ads, unlike Twitch, where it's solid ads. <laughs> it is really hard to watch Twitch on my TV out there. Like, virtually impossible. I've been trying to find speedrunners who are routing Final Fantasy 16, and I just can't. Yeah. Uh, there is a Roku app, I think, because they Twitch just dropped the Roku app. Yeah, they just deleted it. But uh, there's an unofficial one, I'm pretty sure, that uh, doesn't run ads. Well, I run it on my Xbox out there. It's the only thing that the Xbox gets used for is running Twitch and YouTube on the TV. Yeah. Oh, well, can't help you. Yes. Uh, I'll. Uh, I've never been able to get a freaking ad blocker to work on Twitch. They used to. Yeah. Back in... And I would be happy watching ads if I just had to watch a couple of them on the start of a stream. But to find a stream, I've got to browse through a bunch of them to find somebody that I like. That's and then the watch problem, like... the same Wendy's ad every single time. Yeah, it's like, oh, this this stream looks like it might be interesting. I've never seen them before. Go to watch two minutes of ads. Yeah, never mind. And after two minutes of ads and 30 seconds, you're like, I'm not going to enjoy watching this guy's stream. I want to find somebody else. It's or kind of how browsing works. Or the stream hangs and you have to refresh. Yeah, that's even worse. I don't know what ad blocker I use, but for Twitch, it just blanks out the screen and says hiding ads for two minutes. And that's almost better. <laughs> <laughs> the other problem I keep having with Twitch, and this is not Twitch's fault. This is just the community's fault. Is like I'll click a thumbnail that looks reasonable, like it looks like gameplay, but then the gameplay is a tiny part of the screen, and it's like the guy has all the Twitch layout covered with like his anime waifus and stuff instead of gameplay. And I'm like, I don't want to watch that either. Yeah, that's kind of a reason that I don't watch a lot on Twitch, is because like if there's like GIFs or moving stuff on their sidebar or their uh, VTuber avatar like moves or something, like. I just can't watch it. I've <laughs> too ADHD. I cannot handle the VTubers. I just and it's I feel bad saying that because some of my friends on Discord when they stream they use their little VTuber guy and it's just it the, the uncanny valley is too real. Like get a webcam or don't do it. <laughs> I I don't mind the like rotating gifs or whatever as long as it's not over the the gameplay. If you put yeah, like as long I, like, I've got my little... Oh, I don't have my little turtle on screen. Why not? I don't know. Yeah, uh, like that turtle. That turtle would be distracting to me if I was watching. Thanks for I'm reminding me to... stare at the turtle. <laughs> All right. Raz has reminded me to put the turtle back on screen, so I have done that. So I don't watch these. I don't watch these, so it's fine. Do whatever you want to. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's, not, it's not even a turtle. It's like a freaking tentacle beast. But it's a tiny turtle in the corner. And like maybe that's how they rationalize it to themselves. I'm like, it's just one tit yeah. monster waifu. Yeah. Jiggling constantly. <laughs> that turtle is a gateway drug to uh, other Final Fantasy VIII creatures that you have to constantly uh, Angela search. I don't I'm know. Watch, I'm watching the tur I'm watching the turtle right <laughs> now. It it looks like a it looks like a breast with teeth. You think that's what breasts look like? No, no, no. I said it looks like a <laughs> breast with teeth. It, I, I, it, I, don't, I don't see it. <laughs> it looks like a spinning turtle with like a ribbon attached to the top of it. Yeah, it, it looks like a turtle. I know, because I've stared at it for hours. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you watching the video who didn't know, a year or two ago, I did a playthrough of Final Fantasy VIII where I was trying to 100% the game. And to do that, you've got to Angelo search for hours and hours and hours. And the way to do that is against this particular monster who it's confused. And when the monsters get confused in the game, they just spin around really fast. So that's what's happening here. And I would let that in a picture in picture sit there for hours while I was playing some other game. 
And then I have a gif of it. And maybe some people feel that way about their jiggly waifus. I don't know. It, it, if waifus are important to some people, I don't want to take that away from them. Or their lives in general. They just spin around and around. <laughs> you spin me right around, baby. <laughs> like a turtle, baby. <laughs> well said. All right. Who has a hundred word summary of all the trouble you got into last session? Not me. That's too many words. Uh, we found, we went to Doom Space and found the, uh, well, we met the princess, right? Mm -hmm. That was the first thing that happened. Then we met, uh, we went to go find Major Warwick Blastmoth. Mm -hmm. And then we got attacked by clowns. And then we arrived and we rescued Major Warwick Blastemoff from some creatures who I don't remember what, what they're called. <laughs> I, have yeah, I don't, I don't know what those Commodore... creatures are called. I know what the new creatures are called, but I don't know what the old ones were. I have in my yeah. notes here that Commodore Crux was sad. <laughs> he was, and you guys cheered him up. The uh, starfish creatures you fought were Artooks. And then at the very end... The big cliffhanger or bulettes coming up out of the ground. Land shark. <laughs> Eager to join a coalition against the Zarixian Empire, the heroes arrived in Doom Space to find the system on the verge of collapse. Commodore Crux led his crew to Arun with the goal of finding an old comrade named Warwick Blastimoff, who was tasked with organizing a coalition in advance of taking the fights to the enemy. Now the two land sharks had burst up out of the ground. That was the cliffhanger ending. But the adventure says you can fight them or you can retreat to the safety of the ship. Weren't people severely injured after that last fight? Forget it. Not really. Yeah. Do you, do you want to fight them or do you want to retreat to the safety of the ship? Let's just are we, are retreat. We short on time. I mean, it's not like we get EXP for anything. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I guess we want to retreat. Excellent. So that's that cliffhanger resolved. Hooray. <laughs> Every adventure ends with a cliff. So this is what happens when you got 11 cliffhangers you have to write into an adventure. <laughs> You end up with something like this. Somebody, like, every single cliffhanger is, has had some character, has had an NPC menacingly say a monster's name and then it immediately not be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Like we've had what was it? Uh, mind flayers. Yeah, uh, mind flayers were not a problem. Vampires, I remember that one. The vampires, vampires. were a different kind of problem. <laughs> so yeah, here you is let's... Uh, Princess Zidali, and here is war with blast him off, and here is your trusty ship, the Second Wind, which you guys have not scuttled yet. I mean, I feel like we were expected to. <laughs> If this well, picture, the option that we might have accidentally this picture, it. if this picture is, uh, you know, relevant, apparently this ship is not in great condition. It's in perfect condition. It's got full HP. What? I mean, I can cast mending if it's broken. Well, you just look at the like the railing over here. The princess is on is broken. I would say that there's definitely a problem with the ship, and that is that the trench is the worst. It's not the worst. Sure. He's just a tree man. Can we? Like, uh, petition to name to rename the tr the tree Trent. <laughs> I don't think the tree has a name. Well, he does. I just don't remember what it is because he's not really. He a has a name. You told us what it was, but I don't remember what it was. So now he's Trent. Okay, Trent. Tr Trent the tree. You get blast him off aboard the ship. You guys head back out into Doom Space, leaving the rampaging Terrasks of Arun behind you. Maybe it's better for that planet to just get sucked into the doom. <laughs> it's going to happen. Yeah, let's just let that one go. Yeah. <laughs> Blastoff explains. My efforts to create a coalition have been unsuccessful. The factions of Doom Space have little interest in battling the Xerixian Empire. It seems like a distant threat to them. 
They'd rather fight amongst themselves. You saw for yourselves how prickly the Artooks were. The Artooks were the starfish monsters. Uh, my peaceful entreaty seems to have offended them. The only thing Wait. these factions seem to have in common is their hunger for ships, spell jamming helms, and weapons. Things I can't provide. War is everyone's native tongue here, and the ones most fluent in it are the Mercanes. The blue giants are making a killing by selling ships, helms, and weapons to the other factions in exchange for raw mineral resources. But all is not lost. I've learned that the factions are in debt to a Mercane named Vokoth. He might be willing to help us for a price. So wait, oh, we're, keep, we're keeping Mercane? We never went back to Arcane? Yeah, we're keeping Mercane. <clears throat> okay, so question. He tried to entreat with the plant starfish monsters to get them to join his coalition? Yes, they are sapient beings that live on Oops. this plateau, and they chased him off. Oops. Oh, well, I feel bad about frying a bunch of them. <laughs> I realized they were sapients. They sure didn't act like it. They did not. <laughs> oh, well. You can't judge a starfish monster by its cover. They had covers? Yeah, like starfish covers. A little, uh, they were, like, yeah, they knit them. They're made out of yarn. I thought they were original. Wow. I did not expect everybody to just, like, dot, dot, dot me there. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Uh, anyway. Please fill the silence. I'm starting to feel awkward. Uh. <laughs> please, d d do not worry. You know how many times I've opened my mouth and gotten that re exact response? It was a cover <laughs> original joke. What? No, we got why, it. Why, why do you people hate fun? We understood the joke. I know. <laughs> so that is Blastemoth's idea is he was unsuccessful in negotiating this coalition on his own, but he thinks everybody's in the pockets of this Mercane, so if you strike a deal with him, you might be able to get these factions all pointed in the direction of battling the Xerxian Empire. Sure. I'm up for anything. I'm just a little guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... So, where would we... Sarge will ask, where will we find the Mercane? Vokoth is on his giant base, which orbits one of the moons in the Doom Space system. Uh, it's about a three day trip from your current location. You can see him on the map there. Uh-oh, storm. <clears throat> so that, so the actual moon that it orbits around is composed entirely of toxic green gas, but the base orbits around the moon. Yeah. So it looks ominous, but... I mean, it, it probably it is. is a little ominous, yeah. I mean, we're in a place with a feature where, like, the main feature is called the Eye of Doom. Yeah. So, you know. Everything you hear is ominous. So to hear Blastemoth tell it, this, the moon of Phyrene here, uh, the one closest to the eye, and the sun collapsed, thousands and thousands of creatures were evacuated, and this was apparently done with Vokoth's coin, but it wasn't done for charitable reasons, if you follow. All of these factions are now in his pocket. Cool. So, so like, why did the sun ca collapse? Just proximity to the Eye of Doom. Everything's being sucked in. The whole system is being flushed. Cool. I see no problem with this plan. It sounds like a good plan to me. Okay. Solid with, with no, not a single hole in it. What's the worst that could go wrong? Obviously, this man is going to just fall over himself to help us with no strings attached. That's almost certainly not the case, Crux points out. And uh, Grimhale and Topala both agree. 
So the question comes: comes what what do you guys know about the Mercanes? Nothing. The Hurricanes. Yeah, my character would know giants. You said <laughs> they are they're blue giants, and That's about the extent of my loan. <laughs> they're similar to GIF in one way, in that they're purely mercantile. They, they deal and buy and sell and trade, and that's their whole thing. Whereas gifts are essentially, uh, they see themselves as mercenaries. The Mercanes are the ones who would keep them provisioned in weapons, ships, uh, magic items, things of this nature. You can trust a Mercane as far as you can uh, pay him off. So do they respect strength or wealth? Wealth. I guess we don't need to kill them then. I, I should hope not, Blastemoth says. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when I, when I was a little boy, we used to play this game called King of the Mountain. Well, Vokoth is definitely King of the Mountain in Doom Space. <laughs> For yeah, sure. Knock him off. With a stroke of his pen, he can make or break this dream of a coalition against Xerxes. So how do we get on his good side? Bring him something shiny? He doesn't have the answer to that. <laughs> well, let's go ask him how what we can do to get on his good side, right? First things first, That's... you make your way there and set up a meet. Yep. Asking is free. Okay. I have great artwork of Vokoth's base, which you reach after three days of travel and the book says here uh observing the two gift together you notice that blastemoth's mere presence raises crux's spirits filling him with hope and optimism oh yeah His what, what that means that. is that the the gift we already had wasn't good enough right Sorry. You had some like bu had some like bum ass gif. <laughs> More of a Sarge gif. Sarge is very social. So this is <laughs> Vokoth's base orbiting above the toxic green planet below. Doesn't look oh. evil at all. I thought that was a hippo face on the front of this ship. I was going to get excited for a moment. Floating above the luminous green clouds of Vokoth is a structure made of gray and black stone with large crystal formations jutting from the underside. Docks radiate outwards from a building that is capped by a crystal dome. Several ships are moored there, including a galleon and four others that are shaped like a wasp, a scorpion, a lamprey, and a bird, respectively. Attached to the main building is a tower that has its own private dock near the top. At the end of this dock is a ship shaped like a damselfly, its metal hull painted bright blue. Flanking this dock are two identical 40-foot-tall statues, each one depicting a thin, blue, well-dressed giant. And the whole station is bustling with activity. Neat. Uh, dock 8, here, if you guys are done looking at this artwork, I can delete it forever. Because the docks are helpfully numbered 1 through 8. And I know you guys like to label maps. Here is the more useful map. Here is the, uh, the Mercane on his throne. <laughs> the man himself. I love his giant feet. How he just pokes him out from under his robe. He's wearing a monocle, Brick Road. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, this, this, that's the guy. That's Vokoth. What's he drinking? What is that? It's a, it's a plasmoid. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot more ominous than... But yeah, I feel it's like slightly stroking a giant displacer beast on his lap or something. <laughs> uh, in old editions, these creatures were called arcanes, and then in third, I, they, they, there must be a reason why they changed it to mercanes. Yeah, because they third edition they added arcane magic as like a high level classification of magic. Might have been fourth edition. They, they were changed to mercanes in third. I, mean, I guess they're mercantile creatures, so like the name they're, they're yeah. mixing 
merchant and arcane together. Like, it's fine. Um, I do wish he wore shoes. It is a little unsettling. What? His, the toe on this side is much larger than this toe. The big toe. <laughs> Get it. That's perspective. Now, when I say giant, I don't. He's not like a storm giant. He's not like eighteen feet tall. I think they're like ten or twelve feet tall or so. So considerably taller than you guys, but not like a Skyrim giant, if that makes sense. So, so we're like normal. So you got moose down here. You got normal people, and then you got like Goliaths, and then you got Mercanes, and then you got like other giants. The difference between like a Goliath and a Mercane, because a Goliath that can get up to eight nine feet, I think. Uh, but they're, they're like they're very muscular, whereas Mercanes are very lanky. They're all bones and joints and angular features. They're cool. I've used Arcanes a lot <laughs> in second edition games that I've run. Arcanes. Apparently, they're Sarge not... is eight feet tall. Uh, these were second edition games, yeah. Treble. So those they were Arcanes then. <laughs> uh, no, because every time they release a, uh, a, I don't know if you can hear that. The, the, I've angered Thor, God of Thunder, <laughs> with my with my arguing about arcane versus mercane. <laughs> so you've got the main dome of the area here labeled one, and then around it you've got all of the docks. Then you've got this tower over here where it's labeled four. The tower is about fifty feet in the air, and you see the private dock attached to it is dock number eight. Docks one, two, four, five, and six have other ships already docked there. So you guys have your choice of three or seven. And this is the captain's call, but the captain is having his birthday party. So one of you has to be acting captain for the session. Seven. We're going to dock seven. Okay. Now, the adventure, I love this detail because I don't know why it matters, but it makes the distinction. If you're aboard the second wind and Crux is in command, he chooses dock three. If you're traveling aboard the last breath and Garganhale is in command, he chooses dock seven. I don't know why. <laughs> you guys have both, actually. So that's going to put the second wind in dock seven and the last breath in dock three. And shouldn't we do dock five so we can be in the middle? If you want to sit on top of another ship. Uh, yeah. Dock five is currently occupied by the Gadabout, a wasp ship. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> Wasps serve some purpose, I'm sure, in nature, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, the crew of that particular ship are Surin Defilers. The Surins are these, like, reptilian creatures. They're vaguely humanoid, and they have, like, these kind of weird noodle necks. <laughs> Uh, other ships parked here are the Skira, the Remora, the Terrask, the Vrusk, and Vokoth's own damselfly ship, the Devil's Deal. You can't Much call boating, isn't it? You can't call a ship that looks like a a damselfly the Devil's Deal. That just that's illegal. Are you gonna tell Vokath that? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna meet him. I'll let him know that his ship is named illegally. That will go over just well. Crux, Garganhale, Topala, and Flinch remain aboard the ship. Or aboard their respective ships, because Garganhale and uh, Fell are actually over on the last breath. Again, the adventure is completely forgotten that Fell exists. Like, she's never ever mentioned again. <laughs> they keep reminding us that Topala is here. I mean, Topala is the best designed NPC so far. That must mean she's the final boss. Little little bird lady. She, she is pretty compelling. Like, she's pretty lovable, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Blastomoth is going to come down to the station with you. And just as you're about to leave, the princess emerges from the captain's quarters where she's been stationed up. And she insists on coming along as well. I don't think anyone's opposed to that. Okay. No, let her come. No. The station is illuminated, uh, brightly, brightly lit. 
with continual flame spells, embrasures, lamps, and sconces all over the place, warding off the darkness of the doom space system. And you quickly, well, I'll ask you guys, because you've got the place is bustling with activity. You kind of have the one of two routes here. You've got all of the people docking in the various other docks and their crews uh, milling about working that you could pursue. Or you can try to hunt down some of Vokoth's people in particular. Which avenue are we employing to try to get an audience with Vokoth? Mm -hmm. it's my concern if we go after his people they're probably going to want something to set up an audience I mean let's just go talk to one of the guards okay Vokot's guards are easy to find because they are all tattooed with his personal sigil uh, I don't think it describes what the sigil is. <laughs> so I'm just going to assume it's a damselfly. Maybe oh, it's a say dollar sign. It's a giant toe is what it is. <laughs> Vokoth giant toe. Uh, he employs a cadre of Githyanki guards. Githyanki. You guys know what Githyanki are, yes? Yeah. Yeah. yeah lanky, kind of pallid skinned. Uh, he's got, and they're easy. You find them in pairs and trios wandering the stations uh, somebody give me an insight check. One of you from the party, please. I'll do it. Uh, unless somebody beats a plus six. No, I'm pretty bad at these. Yeah, you got a plus six on mine. Oh, one. Yeah, go for it. Uh, that is a 22. Okay. Sizing up the guards as you flag some of them down. Uh, things are calm, but very busy. And... They don't outright explain what's happening, but you definitely get the sense that this is not the usual way that the, the station uh, the station runs. There's definitely something going down in the near future. And you tell them that you need to... Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, we would like to... Not you. I'm, I'm talking to the guard. Sorry. Yeah. Her. Uh, excuse me, sir. We would like to meet your boss. I'm aware uh, you, have, you would I... never be that polite to me. <laughs> I... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, they grill you a little bit. They ask you what your business is with the Mercane. Uh, they seem none too happy that you've taken up both of the, em the remaining empty ports. Oh, trouble just popped. I don't know. Gore is struck. The thunder got him. He just bursted. I suppose we will uh, apologize for taking up both the spots and explain why we're here and why we need to talk to him. Okay. So, they bring you guys around the edges here. You're over here at Dock three. They bring you around the edge of the balcony here. So you pass by uh, Dock two, which is the Remora. Uh, it's a lamprey ship. And the people aboard it are all Artooks, the starfish creatures that you <laughs> burn to a crisp on the plateau. And then in Dock one, as you pass it, is a Shrike ship called the Skira, crewed by... Aarakocra. Aarakocra are big humanoid birds. Like Jarnathan. Huh. Coming around. Yeah, so just, I just met them. Do we need to wait for Jarnathan? <laughs> we gotta wait for Jarnathan. I feel Jarnathan. like I can't truly express my story. Unless Jarnathan is here. <laughs> oh, that movie was so good. <laughs> we can't meet with Vocaf until Jarnathan arrives. They bring up this long, uh, steep ramp into this area, which is a vestibule. It's a waiting area. They tell you that you can uh, wait here until Vokath is ready to call you in. Standing in the room with you are four guardsmen 
also tattooed with Vokath's sigil, the giant toe. Two gif and two gif yankee. Armed and eye eyeballing your group uh, suspiciously. After what feels like too long, the ornate uh, curtain barring you from the audience chamber behind is parted and you were ushered in. It's a huge circular chamber that has an ornate throne opposite the entrance, which, man, they drew it on the map here. The walls are lined with art objects, tapestries, paintings, and weapons on display. You hear a faint magical humming as the curtain parts, and you are admitted inside where he has even more guards standing at attention. Don't worry. Okay. Moose is here. Welcome back. Uh, seated in the throne, you see the bored-looking Mercane with a D20 on his face. Drinking his plasmoid. <laughs> I feel like I've seen this drink in an episode of Binging with Babish. Yeah. What that is, is that's just like one of those really fruity drinks. It's like 90% sugar. Mm-hmm. It's like that episode of Futurama. Vokath is slender, a blue-skinned giant. He's wearing elegant robes and flanked on either side by two bodyguards. I can't say you look particularly important, drawls the Mercane. So speak and don't waste my time. You see that he's giving... Princess Zidali, the side eye. It's all you, his boy. It's all the ooze boy? It's all on you. <laughs> Why is it all on me? I have like a. Like, I, I'm going to like throw it to the old man because I'm still getting everything back up. <laughs> toss the football we're, over we're from the rebellion and we're here to help but he inquires as to what rebellion you're talking about uh well well, well Lucario will explain the story about how their planet was attacked by giant vines and nearly destroyed and through some research and intimidation they've figured out that the Xerxian Empire is at fault, and so they've made their way here to, because they heard there was a giant alliance forming to go against them. And Make me an them. insight check. I roll good. That's an eight. An eight, okay. He asks where he, uh, demanding a fraction of his time fits into your incredibly boring tale. All right. Yeah. So, so remind me again, what we were hoping to get out of this guy. We wanted him to score. He's basically got leverage on all of the races in doom space. Uh, I guess. And, we, he's basically because he has the contract for everybody and has him under the thumb. We want to get him on our side, so that uh, we can, you know, make a coalition. So basically, I, we, I, I get. Heard, the, so we've heard he's in charge. We've come to see how we can help him. Basically, uh, he's in. He's not. There's not a. Uh, there's not an anti, uh, space elf coalition. We're trying to make one by getting this guy on our side because he's already and, got a bunch of people under him. Can I try and make a performance check to present our story, including a number of immaculately drawn visual aids in a way that is not boring? You want to give a presentation? <laughs> uh, PowerPoint mode activated. Make the performance check. Make it a okay. disadvantage. 
Uh, I'm going to use my natural innate ability to remove the disadvantage from that roll. Okay. So that's a performance of 27. Okay. You can see that Vokath is trying to hide some level of amusement. All right. I can tell that you are not the average run-of-the-mill tricksters. Tell me, who is your beautiful prisoner here? And he looks over at the princess, who is at this moment not said anything. She's a passenger on our boat. His eyes narrow. I mean, they started narrow, and you can't see one of them behind the monocle. You shouldn't squint like that. It'll hurt your eyesight. Trust me, I know I'm a doctor. Very well. With a mean glint in his eye. Perhaps I can arrange a private meeting for you with the faction leaders if you can survive three battles in my arena with no rest between them. Are these battles to the death? Oh, yes. I didn't really come here to kill anyone. And he grins at the mention of it. Representatives of the factions will be watching, so fight well. An excellent performance might win their favor. And what will we be fighting against? Prisoners? Animals? Uh, to that, he simply grins and extends an invitation for your lovely prisoner to watch with him from his private box. If nobody stops uh, her, she's going to step forward and accept. Yeah. That's totally up to her. She, she's a free person? Yeah. So, uh, this was a three-day trip to get here, so we have had a long rest. Yes, yes. Yeah, I was just going to ask that. That's very important for Destal. Yeah. <laughs> and he teleports you into the middle of the arena. Where you have one minute to prepare. Uh, um, okay, so... Uh, where are any other entrances for where enemies might come in? Oh, these uh, are twenty foot squares. Holy! Yeah, that's crap. that's why I made search really tiny. Yeah. So that would be like this big. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually too big. I think you gotta be little, little tiny people. You yeah, functionally yeah. have as much room as you need in all directions. As for other entrances into the arena, it's a sixty foot high octagonal chamber. And the giant crystal dome is overhead, which you saw when you were flying in. The floor is blanketed in sand with some broken, unusable weapons and chunks of stone here and there. The perimeter of the octagon is surrounded by a stone balcony 30 feet above the floor. And upon this balcony, you see spectators coming in from all directions. There's no entrance into the octagon as such. You guys were teleported in and you, your opponent's you imagine, will be as well. Sitting above oh. the main balcony is the private box. And looking up, this is where you see Vokath and uh, tonight's date wandering out to the side. Uh, in terms of the minute, do we know that we have exactly one minute? Like, what exactly happens? You have one minute to prepare for the fight in case you want to cast spells yeah. or things. Yeah, Wakari's going to do armor bag of this. Let me see if there's anything I really want to cast for a minute. Uh... Oh, as long as there's a let's in here, I think I'm go gonna... ahead and let's start out. I think I'm going to do a twinned protection from stuff on myself. How long does that last? 10 minutes, I think. Yeah, 10 minutes. Uh, let's do a twin protection from stuff on myself 
And let's get Moose, because I'm most afraid of Moose getting mind-controlled and punching me to death. Okay. <laughs> I'm not the one with the gun, but yeah. Well, I had to back off for that, so he could just trip me or something. Finger guns. That's one uh, sword. Moose is going to do jumping jacks for a minute, I guess, to exercise his muscles. Okay. Wait, never mind. Stretch. He doesn't have muscles. Go ahead and roll initiative. They actually have a dex modifier. I wasn't expecting that. Two huge four-armed giants uh, are teleported to the arena as the spectators, the crowds up upon the balcony, uh, cheering, whooping, and hollering as the two giants appear. Uh, the giants seem flummoxed for a moment. The sudden space and sound of their surroundings. Vokov gives a little indulgent speech about the storied tradition of blood sport. And he introduces the lot of you. Oh, I oh, forgot Blastamoth. He's still with you. What about... Uh... Sorry, the thunder is being very rude. What about uh, Captain Crux? Did he stay on the ship? He stayed on the ship. So well, Only Blastomoth the... and the princess came with you. So the role of Butt Monkey is going to be played by Blastomoth today. I guess. <laughs> and... no, Commodore Crux will still find some way to fail. Just for fun, let's put the Mercane his date up here. So yeah, two huge four-armed giants wearing just tattered cloths covering their fun bits. Uh, they're unarmed, but they still look... I mean, the size here is appropriate. They're enormous. 15 uh, feet tall, it says. Uh, we've got Lakari on... Lakari with the giants on deck. First group to reduce the other group to zero hit points wins. Okay, well. Sorry about this, big boys. Uh, Lucari's going to flick his wrist and shoot out a couple of orange blasts. Okay. Yeah, uh, the first one is probably going to swing right with a roll of 10. 10 does not hit. I see my dice have followed me. Uh, that's, a, that's a crit. Okay. So I guess the one closest to us. Uh, so it's going to be pushed back 10 feet after it takes some damage. Right, that's not very far on the screen, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my dice are amazing. Oh wow. my god. So that's going to be 12 points of force damage. Okay. And Lucari, moving or staying put? Uh, you know what? He's going to get some distance. As Lucari runs in the opposite direction of the giant, there are boos and, che and jeers from the crowd. Who's uh, next? next up is the giants. Okay. They just changed jobs. Hopefully they change job to, like, Bard. Bard has the worst HP growth in the entire Final Fantasy <laughs> Tactics. Yeah. Did not even know I had my phone turned on still. Oh, my God. <laughs> Problem. What is happening? I wish... What, what's happening is it's my birthday, and every person I've ever met is texting me. I wish okay. Discord... I wish all technology would take Discord's note and just say ignore all notifications for eight hours as just a default option it's so good <laughs> sorry about that um it's fine we all love the final fantasy tactics job change so <laughs> so i can move 40 feet and 
and both of these guys can throw rocks. Uh, I do have to ask really quick if they are any of the things for, that are protected protection from stuff. They Mostly are phase. They are they might be. giants. Okay, excellent. Uh, Lucari, they're each going to throw two rocks at you. Okay. They stoop oh. down and scoop rocks up from the floor of the arena. First one, I've got a 14 to hit. Uh, no. And a 7 to hit. No. Then I've got a 14 to hit. No. And a natural 20. Uh, I'm going to use my reaction to pop off one of the silvery bombs. Okay. <laughs> That's I would, because these rocks hurt. Uh, that turns it into a natural one. Ah, wow. <laughs> who gets the, uh, who, who gets the, uh... We don't have our rogue, do we? Uh, no. I guess, I guess. Sarge can sharpshoot. Yeah, we'll give it to Sarge. Yeah. Sarge gets the advantage. Uh, so right now I've got Knot and Blastemoth in their th threat range. Okay. They have a threat range of 10, and they both just ch they each chuck two rocks at Lucari. And, yeah, don't let one of these rocks hit you. That would be bad. Uh, who's next? Uh, next up, we've got Sarge with uh, Moose on deck. Uh, I mean, I'm reluctant to draw a fire, but standing behind the smaller party members doesn't seem productive. So uh, I'll just move out of the way. Uh, is this this one's the wounded one, right? Uh, yes, he was a little okay. further back. And I have advantage. How many times? Do I have advantage for all attacks or just the next one? What's the uh, source of attack. your advantage? Uh, silver barbs, I think. Yeah, yeah I think it's just attack. one attack. Your next attack. Okay, so we're gonna sharpshoot. Okay. Oh come on! <laughs> eight. I have an eight. An eight will not hit. An eight will not hit. My sharp shot luck continues. Uh, I will regular attack, and I'll probably roll really well. Yeah, see, 21. That'll hit. <laughs> yeah, I figured it would. Uh, we're we gonna mark it. Uh, 14 plus... How much? Three, 17 piercing damage. So We had a whole discussion in Discord about how, like, it was... Like, anytime he has advantage, it's mathematically correct for him to sharpshoot. Yeah, and but, so far the highest number I've rolled is six. I know. <laughs> this two is this two is variance. Uh, it, it, like this is good. This is good information to get out now. We know he's been touched by the bog witch. Oh, that bog witch, man. Uh, bog sorry, witch. moving your staying put. Um, I'm happy here. Okay. Who's next? All right. Next up, we've got uh, Moose with Knot. All right. Uh, Moose is going to. Squeezel here. Okay. Next to, to next to not. So you're entering the thing's threat range. Is that intentional? Yeah. Okay. What? Okay. At what point has uh, Moose not immediately ran into the monster's threat range? I'm just making sure that you know that their threat range is larger than most creatures. They have ten. I'm feet, running. Most creatures got five. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm like running right up to this one. Okay. And I'm gonna start punching it. Okay. You start beating the thing about the legs. In the ship. Uh, the ship does probably. Uh, let's see, that's, I think it's six. My stuff is, uh, all messed up from when I lost power, so give me a sec. Plus six to hit. That is a 15 on dice. That's a 21 to hit. That'll hit. All right. Uh, that is... Let me use a key point. So that is nine bludgeoning, six necrotic. So 15 points. Yes. Uh, that is a 24 to hit. That'll hit. Okay. For eight more points of bludgeoning. It is bludgeoning. And then, uh, then another... Does an 11 hit? 11 does not hit. Okay. Uh, that is the end of Moose's turn. I'm going to chill out a little bit on the key points since we got three battles. What is the background rattling I'm hearing through your mic? Rain. What? Oh, it's it's raining that hard. Yeah. Oh, I I can sympathize because the house that I live in doesn't have any insulation in the, in the roof, so when it rains, it's super loud. It's just it's storming very loud right now, so I do apologize. I mean, you didn't create the rain. 
Destel did. It's Destel's fault. Yeah. Yeah. And is Mustaine put there? Yes. Okay. Who's next? Uh, me. So as a bonus action, I am going to cast Misty Step, drawing on my Fey Heritage. Yep. Back to there. The crowd, again, jeers as you... And then uh, I'm going to, as my action for the turn, toss a fire... Uh, actually, Moose, you got that guy locked down, right? We're going to create bonfire in his space, so he needs to give me a dexterity saving throw. Okay. I mean, I don't think I could stop this man from moving, but I will try. That's an 18 my... on the dex save. All right, so they take no damage, and uh, let's see. Uh, when it ends its turn in that space, anything that ends its turn in that space has to also make a dex save. Okay. And that's the end of the protection from stuff. He's taking up four spaces. Well, yeah. Not, not if it's I'll 20. Just, but these, yeah, are, just, <laughs> these are vague distances. At this well, it only, hits, it only hits a five-foot cube, I think. Yeah, so you've, you've made a bonfire under one of its feet. Yeah, yeah. Got it. That's the end of my turn. Uh, we've got top of the order. Did I miss our NPC, buddy? Oh, I didn't oh, place him. Oh, he's not on there, yeah. Sorry, he had rolled a 13. So he ends up on 11. Okay, so he just dodged that turn. Now let's just move him down to 6 and give him a turn. Yeah, that know. works. He delayed. All right, and then, so we've got him with Lakari on deck. Yeah, he lets out a cry and blast twice with his musket uh, at the other one who is eyeballing him. One of them hits. And blackens the creature's shoulder. And he calls out, Jolly good time! What? Because of course he does. All does right. it say in the adventure that that's how he speaks, or is that just you? I mean, you saw the artwork. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, right. That's yeah. Uh, Lucari with giants. Lucari, you got to prove to the crowd that you're not a coward, that your running away has purpose. Do I though? Well, they risk getting pelted with rotten fruit, banana peels. So I will remind you, we are here to in impress the leaders of the uh, factions. You must fight well. I'm saving my fight well for the third round. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> if round one is the two forearm giants, <laughs> what are they saving up? Oh, they have four arms? I didn't know. That. Oh yeah, forearm giants. As you're oh, about to, nice. as you're about to find yeah. out on their next turn. Oh, good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, especially even they have four arms, Lucari's gonna blast. Uh, which one's bloodied? The one by Moose? The one Moose is beating about the shins is bloodied. Oh, he's also standing in the fire. I don't want to move him. Uh, don't worry about it. They're pretty agile. They got out of that fire pretty easily. Yeah. Alright, so the one by Moose, we will go hit with a couple more arms blasts. Okay. Does a 14 hit by chance? 14 will hit. Okay. So the first one's going to hit. I'll just do this one at a time. Uh, it's going to be 9 points of force damage, and he's pushed back 10 feet. Okay. And then the second beam. That's uh, going to be a 10. A 10 does not hit. Cannot roll today. And uh, these are twenty foot square. Twenty foot, yeah. I try not to have twenty foot squares on the table because this happens, but <laughs> can't really shrink this map down any, unfortunately. So I'm hoping he can move to that spot. It's about 30 feet. He's placing himself between the giant and the uh, big blue guy. So if the rock comes, maybe he'll hit the blue guy instead. Well, no, he's sitting in his private box some 20 feet up off the ground. He still doesn't want rocks thrown at him, most likely. 
So you're you're trying to go them into throwing a rock up into the box? <laughs> Kinda, yeah. All right, fair enough. That would definitely impress some of the faction heads. Uh, who's next? Uh, next up, we've got giants with Sarge on deck. Okay. Lucari. I need a dexterity saving throw. Woohoo. Uh, it's going to be a 13. 13. You are grabbed up by the giant. Each of your limbs in one of its terrible hands. Uh, you are grappled. And okay. he is pulling you apart. Is that what he thinks he's doing? Well, that's a raid. <laughs> oh, and you take some... Okay, you do take damage this turn. I was... Oh, good. Then he's going to take some uh, damage from our this. Uh, I had to look up to see if you take damage on his turn or your turn. And this is too many dice. This is when you reach for the phone app, right? To roll dice for you. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Is it a melee attack? No. Uh, yeah, it's a, it has to touch you to do it. It's not an attack roll, so it doesn't count as a melee weapon attack, but it is a... It's a saving throw thing. Okay, if a creature hits you with a melee attack while you have these hit points, the creature takes damage. So he's going to take 20 cold damage. He didn't hit you with a melee attack, though. He just grabbed you. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure Armor Magathus would work in this situation. I'm not sure either. Well, I'm going to double check the spell text here, and then I'm going to finish rolling damage because I've only rolled half the dice so far. The creature hits you with a melee attack. Yeah, this is a strange kind of attack because it's not. I'm gonna I'm gonna say Agathis would work here because he's literally grabbing you with his hands. It's just the attack doesn't use an attack roll. He's still grabbing you up with his hands. Yeah. I think the intent is for the armor to freeze anybody who hits you. All right, let me finish rolling damage now. Forty-six points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, if this damage source reduces you to zero hit points, you are ripped into four pieces. And, Thankfully, it is not, but I no longer have two HP. Uh, and that damage is going to be repeated on each of this thing's turns until you break the grapple. Okay. How much damage did Agathus do to him? Uh, Twenty. Twenty. That's not bad. I mean, he'll probably <laughs> he's pretty badly bloodied now. Uh, the crowd really likes this. This whole tearing them apart thing. This one is going to start bludgeoning Blastomov. Uh, I know he's not. He's going to... Oh, uh, yeah, he is. See if we just kill Blastomov. Not with those rolls. That's a one. That The second hit will hit. Yeah. Fourteen points of damage. The second one brings his fist down on Blastomoff, crushes him with one of them. Uh, he has to step forward to do that. Blastomoff's in this square, so I mean, he's here. So he's also stepped into Moose's threat range, and that's my Giants. Who's next? Ah, uh, we've got Sarge with Moose. Well, I mean, something, something, shoot the thing tearing my ally in half. Okay, uh, not in half, in quarters. Quarters. Sorry, it's, it's very, good, very specific. Properly fractions. You know what? I'm not going to sharp shot because sharp shot is a trick. So, <laughs> uh, eleven. Eleven will not hit. You should have sharp shot. Yeah, I should have. Uh... Jesus Christ! Twelve. <laughs> Twelve does not hit. Twelve does not hit. Uh, reload. <laughs> Who's next? Sarge fires wide. Who's up? Uh, Moose with Knot. Sorry, uh, let's see. I'm in this thing start range for sure, so... How bloody does this one look? 
Uh, pretty bad. This one too. So I'm gonna. Would you? Is this guy within twenty feet yeah, of me? He's twenty feet. Okay. Uh. Dagger. Does a uh eighteen hit? It sure does. Okay. Please enjoy. Uh. What is that? Seven points. Piercing damage. Okay. Dagger. That's going to be a miss, because that's like an eight. Okay, so second dagger goes wide. And... This one is going to get some vitamin K. And I miss. All right. So that's the end of Moose's turn. Do not karate chop his ankle. Who's next? Got not with uh, the Commodore. Wait, no, he's not the Commodore. Where's this guy? Last him off. 20, 40. Uh, it's okay, so let's move to about there. Um, I'll do what I should have done at the beginning of the encounter. I'm going to cast Summon Construct. Create a metallic ward on. Mordon. Was it Mordon, the guy on Power Rangers, like the big head? It was Gordon. Oh. No, wait. That, that, no, wait. That's the prince from Final Fantasy 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and spend a sorcery point to quicken a fire bolt at the one that is uh, tear tearing Lucari apart. That'll hit an armor class of 19. That'll hit. Dealing 14 fire damage. And there's a thundering crash as the forearm giant collapses to the ground, kicking up a cloud of dust. Uh, Lucari, you are no longer being torn in four pieces. Yay. Great. You so the construct can move to here and multi-attack the other one. Okay. This is at plus my spell attack. Is that summon construct? Yeah. I just want to see what, it, what, what they can do. So that hits an armor class of... 23 and 21. Both hit. Do you want the total damage or should I split it up? You can give me the, the grand total. Be it's, uh, healthy. Their slams are D8 plus 8. Dealing uh, 25 bludgeoning damage. Okay. And there is applause and cheering from the audience as the first giant comes down. And it's not moving. Uh, that's, the, that's the end of my turn. We got blasting off with Lakari. Okay. Oh, that's, he, a, that's a really good spell. Uh, he has to eat an attack of opportunity. Which is a miss. Blast him off. will fire with his musket twice. That's a miss and a miss. <laughs> There's like one good gif in the universe, and you guys... Well, he's also missing, though. I mean, I guess all the gifts are taking Sharpshooter. Uh, that's it for Blastemoth. Who's next? Oh, Lucari. Oh, uh, yep. We got Lucari with Giants. Are no longer being torn in four pieces. Yay! Lucari yeah. is going to brush himself off. Look up at the crowd, raise his hands, spin around a little bit, and <laughs> shoot two older glasses at this giant. Okay. He would teleport up to the box and shove the guy down, but we're trying to impress him, so... <laughs> that would defeat the purpose of what you're trying to accomplish here. Yeah, you're kind of limiting my actions here. Uh, okay, so one beam is going to be an 18, and the other is going to be a 17. Both hit. Okay. So that giant is going to take 21 points of force damage and be pushed back 20 feet. And he is bloodied. You're pushing him. I don't think it's diagonally like, back. You want, you want him like here? Yeah. Okay. The thing stumbles backward, keeps its footing. and Again, audience, riotous applause as you guys have these giants on their last legs. Uh, giants with Sarge. Giants with Sarge. All right. Uh, not. Give me a dexterity saving throw, please. Yep. 
Look I'm hard. Look before I do this. Do I have anything I can do to make this better? Just delivered this giant unto you. Ace. It goes badly. I don't have disadvantage. I don't think I have any spells with help deck save. Can you use... No. If you fail, can you... No. I can use build for success, right? That works on a save. Yeah, I'll need silvery bars. We do anything for this. Uh, features and traits. Does this work on saves? Give me a second. Saving throw. Yes, I will use built for success if this fails. Okay. 20. Hey. 20? Uh, so 22. 22. Yeah. Reaches down, and you realize that the last thing you want in your life is to be grabbed by this creature. You duck underneath it, definitely slick yourself through its other arm, and does not get a hold on you. Just brushes right past. Fortunately, this is not a recharge. I can try again every round that it's alive. That won't be much longer. Uh, Sarge with Moose. Sarge, can you be the guy? Not with these rules, but I'll try. <laughs> ah, there we go, 23. That'll hit. That'll hit. We don't need to mark this. You should, you, we should, you should start shooting right now, and we should name your gun the Gambler's Fallacy. Right? <laughs> uh, That's a great name for a gun. Nine piercing damage. Okay. And I will not sharpshoot again. Uh, 13. 13 does not hit. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> and uh, I will... Sarge will pout. <laughs> that's and a, end his pouting is a full action. You already... Bonus action? Who's next? Bonus action. Okay. Uh, next up, we've got... Moose with Knot. Okay. Uh, run up. Yep. And... We're gonna we're gonna crush that ankle. <laughs> it, that ankle deserves. It. Might as well be a glowing weak weak spot. Uh, okay, that's a miss. <laughs> that's gonna hit. That's a twenty six. That'll hit. It's uh seven points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Yeah, he's pretty badly bloodied now, especially okay. about the feet and shins. All the toenails have been pulled off. That's going to be a miss because his AC is 14. And then Flurry of Blows for the last hit. That is a 22 to hit. 22 will hit. Okay. Uh, seven points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Are you moving or staying and, put? And an additional five points of necrotic. I am going to stay put. I was hoping that that would do it. That did not quite do it. Okay. Got not with uh, blast him off, so not will move around within his threat range. Okay. And first thing I'm going to do is as a bonus action, I'm going to cast a quickened mind sliver. So I need him to make me a DC 15 intelligence saving throw. Hmm. How's a two do? Okay, so please be enjoying four psychic damage. And that's enough. Four damage is enough? Yep. Oh, I had a whole bunch more damage lined up after that, but hey. That was enough. He only had a sliver of health left, so the mind sliver was appropriate. I will give everybody one turn to reposition yourselves as Vokath steps forward, calms down the cheering of the crowd, uh, praises the battle well fought, and then teleports in round two. Uh, I will cure wounds, Ukari, during this turn. That'd be appreciated. Yeah, we're gonna do. Give you the good stuff. I'm only missing uh, twenty hit points. Uh, you recover ten. Okay, very good. I got four key points left. You know what we need? We I need a tiny little mechanical spider. <laughs> it was a chess piece. How big is this creature? Oh, he's about the same size as the one you just killed. Cool. Yeah, I'm just wondering where it's going to come in from. <laughs> right on top of a squish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it can come in a... wherever he wants. That's such a dick move. Red and green here. Well, here, let me get these on the initiative order. 
I rolled all my monsters initiative at once. I just made notes. He got pretty low. Then there's green. Then there's red. The red and green creatures you've seen before. They are scavers. Who are the space sharks that you've seen. You fought Big Mama, who was a scaver, a particularly large one. I guess they're just swimming through the air. Yeah. It doesn't... I've played a lot of Final Fantasy games. This doesn't phase me. No, they do have a... It is a fly speed, I guess. I thought that their fly speed in this context meant they could fly through wild space, but I guess they can fly through atmosphere, too. Uh, the Giants is a huge somewhat insectoid creature a good 20 feet tall with a head that looks like a triceratops horn uh wielding a great club that is bigger than any of you do you mind if i uh have cast a spell on my action that last turn no that's fine okay i'm gonna tag myself uh lakari and sar and moose with an aid for 10 maximum hit points well, i don't need hit points <laughs> i might uh, well then we'll get uh, moose instead. Yeah, yeah. Give it to somebody else. A uh, question: Do we keep our initiative, or do we roll again? Oh, you keep your initiative. This is fine. Okay. I mean, the adventurer says to roll new initiative at the beginning of each combat, but that just I don't, I don't think it matters. It, does, it ends up not mattering that much. Uh, so we'll start at the top of the order, which I think is my little guy. Green. Yeah, green with Lakari. The green shark. Can swim slash fly 40 feet. Get right in on Moose. Does not have multi attack, Moose. Not that okay. scary. I've got a 14 to hit. Uh, it does not hit. It does not hit. Who's next? Uh, next up, we've got Lakari with red on deck. So Lakari, that got stretch the... was just what I needed. <laughs> you feel nice and limber now. Uh, this one looks more like a smash you into paste kind of problem solver. Um, he's he's a big one, isn't he? He's the, about the same size. He's a good twenty feet. Oh, he's bigger. He's about twenty feet tall, actually. Let's take care of the little guys first. Uh, except Lucari will hit the big guy to push him back and try to buy him some time. What's really funny is, like, I only, I, there's a lot of people who have my phone number, but I don't have them saved in my phone, so I'm just getting birthday messages from random strings of numbers. Don't worry, I'm sure one of them wants to tell you about your own warranty. Or they're calling for American Express. <laughs> Would you like to extend your shark warranty? All right. On the big guy, does a 14 hit? Uh, on the big boy? Yeah, the big, big boy. Does not. Uh, does a 23 hit? 23 will hit. What are you attacking with? Uh, Eldritch Blast. Okay. So you fire the first Eldritch Blast, and it goes wide. Yes. You fire the second one, and you know that it's a dead hit, but at the last moment, you see a reflective shimmer across the beast's carapace that flings your Eldritch Blast aside harmlessly. The force damage? That makes me sad. Sounds like he's got shield. The shield spell. Not. You want to move back? Uh, red with Sarge. Uh, this is the big boy shark. There's, I mean, neither are too scary, but... Uh, this red shark is large enough to swallow one of you, and that's exactly what's going to happen here. I might get a bonus action. I want to swallow Sarge, but that doesn't make any sense in context, because this construct is closer, so I guess we're going to try to swallow the construct. Alright, I've got uh, 14 to hit the construct. No. Ah. Uh, okay. No. Nope. Yeah, the shark chomps forward, and your little Modron sidesteps out of the way. 
And that was red. Who's next? Uh, next up, we've got Sarge with black on deck. All right, Sarge, can you bring him down with one shot? Uh, depends on who him is, but I'll attack the red guy. Okay. Uh, I hate having taken sharpshooter because now every time I'm like, I want to use it. I want to use it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. Ten. <laughs> A ten will not, will not hit. Okay, I, I will not use it. Just Thirteen. Use it. Thirteen will oh, hit. Thirteen. 13 will hit. Okay, thank goodness. Um, is the red guy damaged? I don't think he is. Not yet. No. Nobody Not sustained yet. Well, damage yet. He will be now. 7 piercing damage. Okay. okay. And, hmm. Well, I was going to fly straight up, but everything can fly, and that sort of seems dumb. <laughs> the sharks would definitely fly after you. Yeah. There's nothing stopping you. The dome is... High, high overhead. I think it's it's, quite... it's thirty feet up to the balcony level. That I think it's an additional fifty up to the dome, and you're in the center of the dome, so you've probably got another yeah. ten. You can go all the way up if you want. I'm gonna go over here, but that's all. Okay. Yeah. Who's next? All right, we've got uh, black with moose. Okay. Bear with me one moment. What we don't know is the insect thing has a turn of stat block. Just taking some measurements here. I think if I move right in, in the middle here of you guys, I'm not leaving Knot's threat range from this position. So I need. Oh, Blastemoff got deleted at some point. Oh no, it's for the best. I mean, we need blast them off though. We need someone to soak damage. I think it's gonna be all of us in a second. It's not quite this big here. We'll put it over here next to Moose and this other little shark. All right. Sorry about that. I need a intelligence. Is it? I'm sorry. A wisdom saving throw from everyone. Including Blastemoth, who fails. That's a big range. Mm, that's pretty bad. Uh, I got a nine. I'm going to throw built for success onto it to push it up to a 12. Okay. 21. Yeah. I got an 18. You're looking for a, a 14. Uh, I have 10. So Sarge and Blastemoth fail. Is that correct? I fail. I also failed. Okay. Sarge, blast them off, and not. You are afraid of this creature. So you have disadvantage on uh, attacks and ability checks while you can, it's in your line of sight and you cannot willingly move closer to the thing. Okay. While you're frightened, on your turn, you must take the dash action and move away by the safest available route unless there is nowhere to move. Okay. I know which direction he's Sarge is going. <laughs> wow, this is really the spell they gave this guy? Because you only get to remake that save if you end your turn in a place outside of line of sight, and you're in a giant arena with <laughs> no cover inside. So basically, uh, they're just out of the battle, and we've lost. <laughs> gotcha. I wouldn't go that far. Can you, you still make your construct to get that a lot of sight? Oh, do you have to make a save for the construct? Uh, yeah, if it can be... It's if, immune to frightened. Does then, that matter? Yeah, if it's immune to frightened, then no. It's just immune. Well, I mean, the only thing that I can think of then is that I just punch this thing until it loses its concentration. <laughs> uh, is that the end for the black creature? Yes, that's it for the big uh, boy. Did not hit caught. anybody on this turn. Black creature, so it's Moose's turn, right? Yep. All right. Uh, I'm gonna step forward. Mm -hmm. And we're going to. I'm gonna stun it. 
Uh, that's a miss. I'm assuming a nine doesn't hit. Nine does not hit. What about a 20? 20 will hit. All right. Please enjoy five points of bludgeoning damage and four points of necrotic for a total of nine. Okay, let me make a concentration check. Uh, concentration two checks. It was two hits, right? It was one oh, hit was with one hit. two damage sources. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it was. That's a pass, so the fear is still in effect. Okay. Uh, does a 21 hit? Sure does. Okay, please take uh, six points. Bludgeoning damage. Okay. And concentration check. Is a pass. Ugh. Flurry of blows. Please take another. Uh, that's a 21 to hit. Mm -hmm. That hits. For, for another seven points of bludgeoning damage. Concentration check. Uh, it's a fail. The fear effect ends as the spell drops. Okay, good, because... Uh, oh, nice. And I don't think he can cast it again. Good. I have... Uh, that's the end of my turn. That's... Uh... Good job. Oh, uh, by the way, I took a attack of opportunity from the green shark. Do, oh, okay. do, 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 do. This one's not big enough to swallow you, and it doesn't hit you anyway. Yeah. Green shark, do, 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 do. Not with, uh, blast them off. Um, I am going to cast a quickened thunder wave. Getting just the large creature. So I'm going to need a DC, uh, 15 constitution saving throw. That is a 23 on the save. It takes half damage, which is 2d8. So you can take uh, half of 7 thunder damage. Okay. And then as a bonus action, I Ooh. will... Oh, wait, that was a quickened. So as a standard action, I can uh, cast a Mind Sliver. Eh, actually, create Bonfire. So let me get a Dexterity saving throw. Slightly worse at these. That's a 14. So there's a fire underneath it, and where did those d8s go? Uh, that's good for, nice, uh, 12 fire damage. Okay. Then the construct will start battering that shark to pieces. So it gets two attacks. Uh, first hits a 20, second hits a 12. The 20 hits. Dealing 16 bludgeoning damage. Okay. And it and is bloodied. At the end of my the... turn, I've got Blast him off with green. Are you adding the fire damage? The fire damage is a reaction when it gets hit. Oh, okay. Uh, blast him off is going to fire twice at the big boy. Or touched, which is nice, because that gra grapple thing would have worked. It specifically says hit or touched. Well, is this still going to hit? Yeah, he's going to have to eat that. Blast him off first shot. It's a big boy shot. That's a almost a direct hit. Second shot. Goes wide. His blast him off is holding his ground here. Not particularly bothered by the tiny more of a barracuda than a shark really uh who's after blast him off uh blast him off we've got top of the round with green followed by lakari okay let's go ahead and have the green guy miss blast him off and then lukari so lukari does not sure he wants to waste another set of force blasts just yet so we're gonna push the well, he no longer has a reaction. Cause, no, he does have one. I'm sorry. He didn't cast shield because it wouldn't have helped him there. Blast him off rolled a really high attack against him. So yes, he does have his reaction at the moment. So red gonna... shark is bloodied, I think. Red shark is bloodied. Yeah, we're going to hit the red shark. Let's see if we can get him off the construct. The construct looks so construct. delicious, though. Construct is just there to tank hits and do. Oh decent. look, I finally rolled decent. Uh, does a twenty-four and a twenty-four hit? Yeah, both of those will hit. You're attacking Red Shark. Yeah. Yep, both hit. 
Uh, so Red Shark is going to take 26 points of force damage and get pushed back 20 feet. Okay. And Lucari doesn't want to be made afraid, so he's going to run like a coward. Well, the fear effect is ended. He failed his concentration save. Yeah, well, the thing is also giant. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Red Shark with Sarge. Okay, Red Shark is going to... Can I reach Sarge? Yeah. I'm delicious. You are. <laughs> Can we Google what hippo meat tastes like? Sarge, we've got a 21 to hit. Oh, that'll do it. Open wide. <laughs> 12 points of piercing damage. And they need a dexterity saving throw. I'm actually okay at these. But with my dice rolls, you know. Let's see here. Uh, I have a 10. You are swallowed by so, the shark. Google has informed me that the taste of hippo meat is similar to beef with a slightly sweet flavor. So, oh. No thanks. Uh. Sarge has been gulped down by the red shark. The red shark is also very badly bloodied. Who's next? Sarge, Sarge. with black on. Yeah. Sarge, before anything... Yeah, do I immediately take damage? You sure do. Yeah. 15 points of poison damage from being inside the thing's oh. poisonous maw. Okay. Why, just let it eat construct. Why the thing's gut is filled with poisonous gas, I do not know. <laughs> well, I mean, this is going to go well, then. I hope it's not flammable, because I'm going to shoot it. <laughs> Um, I don't have disadvantage from range, but I do have disadvantage from firing within five feet. Correct. Assume, right? Yes. Okay. Should I sharp shot, guys? No. I'm, don't be ridiculous. They can't hear you. They can't hear you anyway. You're inside a shark, so. Oh, you're, come you're on. I might have actually hit with that. I have a 19 to hit. 19 will hit. So, yeah. Um, okay. I assume it's wounded. Mm hmm You know what? I really want to get out of here, so I'm going to mark it. <laughs> um... 17 piercing. Okay. So the thing dies. And <laughs> it so swallows Sarge and explodes. You are no longer restrained by the creature, and you can uh, escape by using 10 feet of movement to exit prone into an adjacent square. Uh, I will do that. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, get the... Get rid of the, get rid of the shark. Yeah. We, don't, we don't need that shark anymore. I mean, this is adjacent. Whatever, sure. And then I'll stand up. <laughs> so there's just a blast of... Guts and scales as part of the shark explodes, <laughs> and then Sarge pulls himself out of the thing's teeth. And yeah, I have another very attack. Smart. I have another attack, and I'll just attack the green guy because yeah. why not? I'm, I'm reminding of, uh, reminded of scenes from uh, Tremors. <laughs> uh, I will sharp shot this because I'm feeling good. Okay. I have 16. 16 will hit. 16 does hit. Okay. Uh, he's about to have a bad time. Uh, I need to look something up real quick. Oh, I can only do it once per turn, so this doesn't happen. But this is pretty good. Uh, 23 piercing damage. And it also is destroyed. Leaving. Sarge reloads his weapon and says, Not that delicious. <laughs> Got uh, black with moose. Okay, I am just gonna. Let's just try to smash moose. Well, no, he's got to step out of the bonfire first. We will lock down, blast him off over here. I don't have a melee weapon, so... Have I need weapon. Moose and Not to make a constitution saving throw, please. Oh, okay. Uh, is this a, a poison effect? No. Uh, or no. Acid? Uh, I've got an 11, but I can juice it if that doesn't if that fails. 20 points of acid damage unless you pass the save. What's the DC? DC is 18. Okay. Uh, let's make a uh, save. Let's make a con save for concentration. DC 18. I rolled a 17. Made it. I rolled a 17, but so, I have resistance against Okay, so you both take acid. 10 points of acid damage. The thing just belches its stomach juices out at you. Uh okay. 
Oh, I take the 20. I thought you said you... I yeah. saved, uh, I made a concentration save on, concentration save after that. Okay, right, so 20 points of damage, and then you've passed your concentration save. I took 5 points of damage, because I have resistance against acid. That was a pretty low damage roll, I'm disappointed with myself. Who's next? Uh, uh Moose would not. <laughs> you fool! <laughs> I, I am slightly acidic already. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, does a 16 hit? 16 does not hit. Okay. What about a natural 1? Nope. And what about a 11? 11 does not hit. Alright, that's all I got. You were just bludgeoning this thing harmlessly against its thick armored carapace. Moose, your yeah. pH balance is off. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, not... So let's see here. What do I want to hit this thing with? Um... Guess I'm just gonna cast. You know what? It didn't like the fire. Let's do uh, let's do a quickened mind sliver actually. So I need a DC fifteen uh intelligence save. Okay. It's a seventeen. Okay. Hey. So that doesn't do anything. And then as my action, let's go ahead and do another Conjure Bonfire. So 15 Dexterity save after that. That is a zero. Okay. So that's... Nice. Uh, 14 fire damage. Okay. Does your old bonfire remain? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. And then the Construct walks up and starts speeding it up. So two attacks. Those hit armor classes of 13 and 17, respectively. Neither hit. Okay. That's the end of my turn. We've got uh, Blast him off with green. Okay. Instead. Blast him off is going to have to eat the attack of opportunity. Mm, probably not great. But he'll probably survive. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, he's going to eat a great club as he steps away. Mm, not delicious. Yeah, that was some big boy damage. Blastmoth takes a hard hit to the face with this giant spiked great club and then fires off two shots. Uh, the first shot hits but i'll use the thing's reaction to turn it into a miss and the second shot also misses so now it's ac is even higher but i think only until the end of this turn it's the end of its next turn of its shield until the start of its next turn start of its next turn yep so it just has beefy ac for a while that was blast him off who's next uh lakari with sarge I have to scroll the screen down to find Lucari. He's down here by himself. Yeah. <laughs> You're in a safe place. <laughs> For now. Um. I thought Lucari was a melee character. <laughs> not, with, that. not with not when the monster is this big, sword. apparently. <laughs> He's a melee character when he has spell slots to use. Uh, I'm sorry, but yeah, Lucari, your uh, victor is showing. <laughs> 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 I have two spell slots. So we have three mobs. You should, uh, you should, you should zip the, you should zip that back up. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna try and roll live with the Elder's Blast, I guess. Okay. Um, we're going to. Yeah, I think we're gonna angle. All right, so he's gonna move to. Is this spot? It's okay. Roughly thirty feet, and then we're going to pew pew. Little finger guns. Yep. Let's see if I can roll decent. Uh, does a twenty-two hit my chance? Twenty-two does not hit. Oh, well, then a six is definitely not gonna hit. 
<laughs> six also does not hit. The 22 oh, reflects two. off of the thing's magic, but the six just goes wide. So... Does telekinesis have a side? Uh, this creature is a huge creature, which is the step above large. So it's yeah, like two and steps it's just, above you. It just says one creature, so I'm going to need a strength saving throw. That is a... DC is 15. 17. Then it probably just looks at me and laughs. Uh, it doesn't look like it's having any fun. It looks really upset, actually. It's, it killed it's, its pets. Got uh, Sarge with the creature. Uh, Sarge is going to bonus action Zephyr Strike to give himself advantage because this thing is shielded. And then he's not going to sharpshooter because, of course not. And come on, good roll. Mm, oh, well, 25. 25 will hit. 25 will hit. Uh, there's my... Uh, oh, I actually hit with this. I get a bonus D8. I have never gotten to use that. Uh, so, what damage type is this? So, I have 10 piercing damage and 2 force damage. Okay. And then I'll attack again. Eh, 13. 13 does not hit. Yeah. I have 70 feet of movement. For some reason. Are you so moving? I guess I'm. Just run to the other side of the. Do a lap. <laughs> Got the uh, creature with Thanks. moose. <laughs> okay. Sure. Or why not? That's probably too much. But... Step out of the bonfire here. Probably more like that. So the thing is no longer shielded. Those are nice rolls. I have. A 30 to hit Moose. Uh, sure. And a I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and oh. cast Silvery Barbs on that. Okay. That turns it into a 15. That 15 doesn't hit. And I have a 31 to hit Knot. Uh, yeah, I'm going to Silvery Barbs that one. <laughs> uh, Sarge gets the advantage from that Silvery Barbs. Uh, that turns it into a 26 to hit. Still hits. But somebody still gets the benefits of the Silvery Barbs, right? Yeah. yeah. Is this just my life? Am I just going to have to deal with silvery barbs in every single campaign now? I don't think I'll use it in a serious campaign. Uh, yeah. It... He's crazy to give himself advantage for that. Okay. Who, Not... gets, who gets the advantage? Mm -hmm. uh, I did, I think. Yeah. 21 no, points. Second one. 21 points sorry. of bludgeoning damage as the Great Club comes down. He smashes it to the ground twice. The first one narrowly misses Moose. The second one comes down on Not. Oh, whew, just barely kept concentration. Oh, nice. And who's next? Uh, sorry, that was the creature, so we got Moose with Knot. Okay. Well, he no longer has stupid high AC. So you know what time it is. Well, he still I has stupid high AC. Time but to trigger his, his reaction. Uh, that's a miss. That's a miss. That's a miss. All right. It's been great. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Who's next? Uh, we've got Knot with Blast him off. Um, I think I actually have to Misty Step. That's that's the good thing about melee characters. Sometimes you just roll up and just go miss, miss, miss. All right, y'all have fun. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have to Misty good Step right out of there. Yeah, you step and over then the I shadow of the toss. Box. Yep, and then I can toss a, uh... Let's do a quickened firebolt. Okay. Oh, well, this doesn't have to be quickened, because Missy Step is a bonus action, so it's just a firebolt. Uh, that hits an armor class of 13. 13 does not hit. And then the construct can swing twice. Hitting armor classes of 20 and 13. Uh, on the 20, he goes ahead and uses his reflective Counterspell. shield. Counterspell. It's not a spell. Oh, really? It's just a okay. reaction he can do. Okay. It's not literally the shield spell. I think it's just the language of the shield spell in his stat block. But it's not sure. the magic spell. Okay. 
Although I'm keeping my level three spell slot. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, we've got Blast him off with Lakari. I don't see if Blast him off can get over his big boy AC. He cannot. Let's see if Lucari can get over his big boy AC. <laughs> Lucari does not like this guy. You advantage then, right? I do. Yeah, make use of it. Yeah, so first Elder's Blast. Rolls like crap. I'm, I'm assuming a 20 is not going to hit. 20 does not hit. Okay. Second bolt. Oh, I'm assuming a 21 is also not going to hit. 21 does not hit. That feels good to say. So, yeah, two, two Elder's Blast go and do whatever they do. They just blink off the thing's reflective shield. Moving or staying put? Um, he's going to shift a little closer. He's gonna uh, the, the, the first thing I want to say, Brick Road, is I'm sorry for Gus. <laughs> <laughs> got uh, Sarge with the creature. Gus didn't even need shield. He was just that. Well, all right. Let's see here. Oh, boo. Uh, I have a twenty. Twenty does not hit. Twenty does not hit. Okay. Uh, second attack. <laughs> I have an eleven. <laughs> eleven does not hit. Yeah, bang Gus bang. Is bang. And Gus is it. My turn is over. I guess this is base AC was 21. <laughs> uh, black with moose. All right. Uh, yeah, let's... His reflective shield drops again. I've got a 17 to hit the construct. Uh, that might actually hold on. Uh, yeah, you're looking for a 16, so that hits. Okay, it's going to be 18 points of bludgeoning damage to the construct. And then it's going to take fire damage. It's not a reaction. It's just something that happens. Oh. Being attacked or touched, it gets uh, six fire damage. Okay. And the thing is bloodied, finally. Oh, good. Moose, I've got a 24 to hit. Yeah, that'll do it. Twenty-eight points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, well, there goes half of my hit points. As the thing brings its club down on the construct, and then there's a splattery, separating noise as the thing splats. I like. I imagine like Moose gets completely splatted and then reforms afterwards. Moose is now on the club. Like peels himself off of the club and drips down back into place. You took okay. the uh, ten max HP, right? What would have happened if Moose got torn apart by the orange? <laughs> like, it's just like uh, I mean, splitting like pasta out. dough into equal. Anyway, that's the giant. There would be there would have been four there would have been four Meese running around and oh. you would have been really in trouble. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Uh, Moose with not. All right, we're just gonna we're gonna go for it. All three attacks at once. All right, all right, all right. This might work. Does a 21 hit? Yes. Does an 18 hit? Yes. Does a 20 hit? Yes. All right. Yay. Please take 18 points. This is this is th from all three attacks. Okay. 18 points total from all three attacks. From the splattery karate sounds emanating just from the thing's lower half. Wet slapping noises as I go for the crotch. And Moose, you're staying put there? Yeah. All right, who's next? Uh, not... So... All right, I'm just going to throw two firebolts at it. Well, let's do the first one, and then I'll quicken the second one if I need to. Uh, first firebolt. Hits an armor class of... Nope. Quicken firebolt. Hits an armor class of 18. 18 will hit. Dealing 14 fire damage. Okay. And then I've got two attacks with the Construct, hitting armor classes of 19 and 23. Uh, Both hit. This is plus 16. Man, once this thing runs out of reflective shields, it starts going down quick. <laughs> uh, 18 bludgeoning damage. From two Construct attacks? Yeah. Okay. 
And that's the end of my turn. We've got Blast him off with Lakari. Let's see if Blast him off can hit it now. Uh, an 18 will hit. The 13 will not. For 12 points of damage. Yeah, this thing's on its last legs now. Lucari, can you be the guy? Hopefully. <laughs> now that it doesn't have an AC of like 24. Right. <laughs> Lucari's going to get in the melee range. Okay. He's going to turn to the crowd with a sword, roll his hand over the blade to make it electric, yell out, is this what you want? <laughs> and then booming blade this guy. All right. Gonna, right, you're gonna, gonna natural one. You're gonna look real dumb if you miss. <laughs> no. uh, Twenty-two. That'll hit. It's thunder damage. It's not electric. It looks electric. It's a lightsaber. Deal with it. <laughs> they kind of make humming noises though. They don't boom. Um. So it's gonna be. 11 points of... Actually, yeah, they're both, they're both thunder. Uh, 13 points. And that's enough. There's a, another thunderous crash as the thing comes down, and you can scarcely hear it hit the ground over the sound of the rioting, cheering audience. You are giving them exactly what they want to see. Uh, I'm going to cast another aid, so the Construct, Sarge, and Blast them off all get 5 maximum HP. Uh, Sarge, you got any healing? Yeah, I was just about to ask. He needs healing. I'm I'm at thirteen. Oh, we'll uh, heal him first. Yeah, you get you get the good stuff. Well, let's see. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use both of my key points. Not I have heal two... thirteen. Sorry, what's that? Heal thirteen. Thank you. I'm uh, down. Who's next? I'm down fourteen HP. Down uh, to you guys, something. I'll give you one turn to kind of reposition yourself and take an action if you want to do all this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've already healed my... somebody, so that was my turn. Yeah, that was my yeah. turn. Oh, all right. Well, well then I'll use one key point then. Since it's... I would like to not be directly in front of one of these creatures for once. Right? Like, I don't even know where to go. Uh, let's see. I mean, I've been standing off to the side just to hope to, like, I have lots of hit points. <laughs> Plus <laughs> seven. It's not working. Vokoth shouts. Well done! Now prepare yourselves for the terror of Doom Space! And out of nowhere, a three foot long, wide eyed space guppy appears before you. Oh, is that it? Oh, okay. Wagging its tail in a friendly manner. You may not reach down and pet it. The audience cries out their gales of laughter. Vokoth calls out. Forgive me. Let's try this again. And then suddenly, Queen Gorma bursts up from out of the ground, snaps up the space guppy in its maw. The crowd begins shouting, Gorma! 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 Gorma is a 100-foot-long megapede gross it is gargantuan so what you gotta do is you where is it on my order so what we gotta do is when it climbs on the ceiling you have to shoot it in the eye with a slingshot or uh, yeah no it has to be a slingshot oh the, well the, it's not gonna fall then right the, the yeah. dome is less than 100 feet up uh yeah it's 30 feet to the where the audience is in the balcony, and then I think from there another fifty feet up to the top of the dome. So this thing couldn't quite reach all the way to the top if it stood on it. I don't think it has the physical structure to stand up vertically anyway. I mean, we're going to talk about stinky. physical structure. <laughs> Square cube law would kill this thing if I just used it. Uh, yeah, who's up at the top of my order? Uh, we've got Lakari with Gorma. Is that right? Gorma is the giant Gorma orange on... megapede. Is this copyright? <laughs> copyright. <laughs> Gorma trademark. Gorma registered trademark. <laughs> um, they sell, they sell Gorma plushies Nintendo in the gift shop. Nintendo the stream and the fight. And <laughs> win. Right. This thing is 100 feet long? Yes. Yeah, picture is a giant insect, like a giant centipede. 100 feet 
long. Except it's a megapede. Which means it's worth a lot of experience. Yeah, if only yeah, for that, matter. Great. <laughs> Thanks. I guess with a look of disgust and surprise, Lucari will fling his hands and try to get it away from him. I'm here already furthest away from anybody. I know, and it's still too close. <laughs> Uh, so I got a natural 20 and then a 21. Uh, both so hit. Lose, lose a crit first. Uh, so it's going to be 20 points of force damage and it's pushed back 10 feet from the crit. First beam. You said 20 and points? Second, uh, yeah, 20 points of force. And the second one is going to be 10 points of force damage and push back another 10 feet. Okay. So this thing has 10 to the 6th uh, power legs? Because that's what Mega means, I think? Sure. Mm, yes, Mega is a million. It has a million legs. All right, Lucari has managed to push Gorma back. Yeah, the crowd likes the look of that. They're going to like uh, it a lot uh, more when it starts eating you, though. Gorma yeah, with that. Sarge. I'm Gorma? just imagining it getting pushed back. This 100-foot-long creature going, whoop. That terrifies me more. <laughs> okay, let me do some measurement here. Yeah, I can do this, no problem. Uh, let's eat moose. I mean, he is lime flavor. <laughs> moose, I've got a 28 to hit. Yeah, that does it. Go ahead and re-roll that from a silvery barbs. Okay. That turns it into a 26 to hit. Oh, eh, tried. Uh, Sarge gets advantage. Jesus, this is a lot of dice. You get the fly spot right now. Thank you for the holy no. effects there. <laughs> <laughs> Moose. Yeah. I have 15 points of piercing damage. Okay. Plus 37 points of poison damage. Okay, I'm resistant to poison damage. That's good. So that cuts it <laughs> on the 13 points of poison damage from the bite. And then yep. I need Lucari to make a wisdom saving throw, please. Oh, Jesus. 28. Uh, I'm... Uh, how come I always roll high against Moose? I can't roll high against Lucari to save my life. Is that is that a charm effect by chance? It's not. Okay, well that's a 12 on the save. Only 13 points of psychic damage as the thing detonates a psionic bomb on top of your head, but you are incapacitated until the end of your next turn. That means no actions or reactions. And that's the Megapede. Who's next? Uh, Sarge with Moose. Sarge's advantage on his first attack. Sarge, this uh, is by far the biggest monster you've ever seen. Yeah, I'm going to Zephyr Strike and back off. Like, I think the living ship you guys are sailing on literally is not as long as this creature. Uh, I have eight uh, hit points left. I'll take care of those next round, don't worry. Yep, yep. Okay. I just wanted you to know. I'm going to use the advantage from the Silvery Barbs. Uh, 22. 22 will hit. This thing doesn't have the AC as the previous creature did, thankfully. Yeah, thank goodness. We're going <laughs> to mark him. He will take 16 piercing damage. Okay. I think it's got fewer hit points as the previous creature did as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use the advantage for my Zephyr Strike, and I am going to sharpshoot it. I should have sharpshot it the last time. Nice. Uh, I have 20. 20 will hit. Unnatural. Uh, I only get this one, and this is Zephyr. Uh, he takes 31. Or Sorry, hold on. 23 piercing and 8 force damage. Okay. Not bad. Yeah. And I... Sarge moves 30 feet up in the air. So you're starting to fly? As well, yeah. Okay. Who's next? Moose with not. Moose. All right. Well, uh, let's see. Attack number one. Does a 13 do it? A 13 will not hit. 
Natural one's not going to do it. This thing has a stealth of plus four, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, 12 to hit. All right. Uh, I'm going to uh, bonus action. Oh, wait, no. That third, so that third attack didn't happen because I forgot I had to bonus action. Uh, bonus action, disengage. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to move Hide behind way God. over here. Yep. <laughs> okay. That's about all Great. of my movement. You got just uh, a... not with Blast them all. So first of all, I need a DC 15 dexterity saving throw as I engulf the thing in a fireball. I have a 12. Nope. You know it's a big monster when you get what, like a fireball for all to itself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't even see the fireball; it's just inside. <laughs> it just starts smoking, and the smell of roasted megapede fills the air. Uh, Twenty-seven fire damage. Okay. And then I will spend a sorcery point and do a bonus action firebolt, hitting an armor class of twenty. Also hits. Dealing 11 fire damage. And the thing is bloodied. And then the construct goes in. Two slam attacks. The crowd goes wild at the like uh, just the sight of this tiny little construct running up at this Gorma. We've got uh, armor classes of 14 and 10 on the construct slams. Neither one hits. Okay. That's the end of Knot's turn. I'm gonna... You know what? Moose is right there. I'm gonna stand in front of Moose. Okay. We've got Blast him off with Lakari on deck. Uh, Blast him off is going to move away from the creature before attempting to fire at it twice. He hits once. Deals a little bit of damage. He seems like he's really getting into the swing of things now. And who's next? Uh, we've got Lakari with Creature. Okay. Uh. <laughs> There's not much Lakari can do except for move away. Use your spell slots. <laughs> I can't. I'm incapacitated. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you cannot oh, no. move. You can't re you can't take actions or reactions, but you can move. You can move. Yeah. You can move over got, here. Uh, Goma with uh, Sarge. So you've done the smart thing, though. You're all guys are all spread out everywhere. That's the correct thing to do. So let's kill this construct first. Yep. That's its job. I've got a 23 to hit the construct. That definitely hits. It's going to be 24. Taking seven fire damage. 24 piercing damage to the construct. Yep. And then, is it immune to poison? Oh, uh, let's see. That's suddenly it's immune to poison. And yes, he's immune to poison. Okay, so the poison damage does not apply. And he takes seven All right. fire damage. Three hit points bite. left. Go aid spell. And not. I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw, please. What's the DC on that? DC is 15. I can't make that. I fail. Okay, it's going to be 23 points of psychic damage. And you are incapacitated until the end of your next turn. So the thing bites at the construct and then detonates a psychic bomb on Knot's head. Who's next? Uh... Constructs, so we've got Sarge with Moose. I mean, I'm just gonna keep Zephyr striking. I have a bunch of spell slots, right? So How do you know there's not another boss fight of... after this? Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> there's an even be lying. <laughs> there's an even bigger might not get to fight Mega Gorma. Wow, double natural twenty. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, you Alright, should... so I, I need a lot of days. Hold on. <laughs> uh the only thing that would make this better is if I was sharpshooting, but all right. Well, he's gonna have a bad turn. Uh, I God, hold on. <laughs> That's a good roll. <laughs> That's a real good roll. What is this? Uh, thirty-three piercing and fifteen force. Wow. Yeah. It's dead. Forty-eight. Sarge <laughs> has just had enough of Gorma, <laughs> and brings the thing down. And as the thing crashes and kicks up dust everywhere. The crowd begins cheering Sarge's name. Sarge will whirl his revolver, and it's the only time you've ever seen him do that. <laughs> he just starts revolver ocelotting it. Yeah. So yeah, the crowd loves it. Uh, looking up, 
Vokoth looks down approvingly uh, at it. Even the princess seems to be impressed by the feet on display. You guys are fairly winded. I know Moose took a bunch of damage. A bunch of spell slots have been erased. And just then, a portion, specifically before the characters have time to rest or take any further actions, a portion of the dome above the arena shatters. Spectators are startled, and shards of crystal fall down like rain. I think that should cause for a deck saving throw against the falling crystal shards, but the book doesn't say that, so... A serpentine dragon with scintillating scales and nebulous wings sweeps down through the hole. Mounted on its back is an armored figure whose face is hidden behind a visor. The figure calls out, I am Prince Zeleth of the Zarixian Empire. I've come for my sister Zidali. Surrender her to me, you ants, or be annihilated. I still have one attack. Can I continue my turn? <laughs> no. This is before <laughs> characters have any time to act. Next time <laughs> on Light of Zarixis, <laughs> will Sarge shoot the villain in the head in the middle of his villainous speech? Will it all come to a terrible anticlimax? <laughs> Will they surrender Princess Sidali? I mean, probably. She's not that nice. That's it. That's this whole chapter is just those arena fights. Okay. Those were very tough fights. Yeah, that was yeah. pretty good. That was a... What were the monsters called here? Let me scroll back up. So what party size do you think they balance the, the their uh, adventures around, right? I would say four or five would be my guess. Like... The, the four-armed giants were called Barogs. And then the big Triceratops guy was a Braxit. And yeah, it had like psychic shields and just impossible to hit. And then the Megapede gets the psychic bomb attack. So lots of psychic damage. I still have one spell slot. Well, you got this. I've got a couple spell slots because uh, I got knocked out at the end. You got I Prince have... Celeth and his dragon to use them on next. I have three hit points, but I've got three spell slots and one sorcery point. I have eight hit points and no key points. I have two slots for healing or to kick ass, I guess. <laughs> I mean, we all know this is how, how this is going to happen. We're going to get <laughs> in next time, and it's going to be like. It's going to be resolved immediately. immediately. And yeah. yeah. With no combat. Like, no, spare them, and then they both teleport away or something. <laughs> and we have to go rescue the princess. <laughs> and we get there and it says the princess is in another castle. Yeah, the Xerxian <laughs> castle. That's the whole point, right? So when we come back next week, we'll probably be just rolling initiative against this dragon and the prince. Fantastic. Yep. That's the whole Down. point of the arena, is to suck all your hit points and spell slots away for the real fight. That sounds like something you would actually do. I mean, to us, yeah, that's it's it's, <laughs> it's a good it's just good counter design. No, it's not. <laughs> Listen to me. You're mean. You're good in this part. Yeah. What do you mean it's not? It's excellent in counter design. You it, you erode the strength of the party. We're not ero We're not eroded. We've been like swept down river at this point. <laughs> Those are tough creatures. I think the 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 Barogs are CR six each one, and then the Megapede is CR eleven. <laughs> Yeah. So those are big boy creatures. Megapede didn't really... I mean, the Megapede hit me for a lot of damage, but... Uh, which I, by the way, would have... Uh, I'm trying to do the math. No, that wouldn't have killed me outright if I wasn't uh, uh, resistant to poison. Yeah, the, the orange guys were each CR6, the Brexit is CR9, and then the Gorma was CR11. So those are, those are big boy fights. <laughs> right. I feel like the Wizards of the Coast people either make their encounters way too easy or way too hard. So, if you tried to extrapolate any lessons from the first villain who just teleported to your ship immediately to get punked for no reason, I guess that's just to lull you into a false sense of security for the later stuff. Right. Well, to be fair, he kind of just used his uh, action to bust through the crystal thing, so, you know. He's going to get shot in the face at the start of the next. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we'll do that yeah. next session. See you all next Sunday. Thank you very much for playing. Later.
Peace out. Later. Cheers. Thanks for hosting. <laughs>